I would totally rock calisthenics to get free bus rides every day. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Unreal Talk. I'm Brian. That's Dave. Now this is an insane clown posse graphic novel that I was reading. Just now. I've already read it before, though, so I can put it aside. Yeah. It was, it was just we was doing that while our intro was starting, you know. Yeah, you know, to get everything warmed up, and, you know, it's, it's that shit you don't see before the news. Anyway, we're going to talk about some stuff. I had to get a new TV because, um, well, when I moved out to Reno, I bought a little 20-some inch tube TV at Walmart for like a hundred and some bucks. And it's still there, and I got it in my bedroom. But somebody else, one of our uh, old friends and co-workers, who I haven't heard from in quite some time, uh, actually gave me another TV. It's like 30-some inch big tube TV. It's bigger than the other one, but it's starting to die out. And the little one is too small for the living room. So I was like, I guess I gotta get a new TV. But then I was thinking about TVs, right? And I was like, I remember when I was a kid, my parents had, you remember that one they had in the basement with the video games all set up to? The big box one with the actual knobs and the power button that actually was like, pull out to power on, you know? Yeah. That's why I can never get that TV to work, because I have no idea how to pull out. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, we're classy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, so Dave's TV is a little fringy on the edges now. Uh, you can see yeah, that the... discolorations that look like someone's running a magnet over the screen. Yeah, color tube's starting to go, stuff's blowing out. Soon you're going to start seeing, like, black spots probably in the... Well, I already ordered the new TV, so it's not going to have a chance to die. <laughs> oh, really? What did you end up going with? Was it a Vizio? Yeah. Although the reviews were kind of mixed. Well, I mean, mostly good, but the bad reviews were like, holy shit, I took it out of the box and it can't, showed up broken. You know, or um, I tried to turn it on, but there was some major problems. And it just seems like the same major problems keep happening to people over and over again. But not as many as the people are like, yeah, this TV's great. Never had a day's trouble with it. Yeah. So, so technology, you know. Yeah. The more sophisticated it is, the more delicate it gets. Yeah, and the more sophisticated it is becoming, actually. So. Yeah, I mean, we went from, like, remember projection TVs? Oh, a friend yeah. of mine had one of those, and I was so fucking jealous. Oh, yeah? Because it was fucking huge. It was I as know, big was... as a modern flat screen, maybe even bigger. Yeah, I think my father had one of those, actually. Um... You know, you weren't supposed to play video games on it. Like, ideally, they said, don't do that, but we yeah. always did. And it was fucking awesome. Because Mario was, like, this tall. <laughs> yeah. But why was that? I mean, would it burn an image into the screen? Or? It has something to do with the projector and how it... Tr I forget the exact tech... I wasn't exactly paying attention at the time. Yeah, I was understandable. Like, I wasn't reading tech journals back then. Yeah. All I cared about was it was bigger than the TV at home and it was cooler. The only downside, the major downside to one of those is that uh, the angling problem. Like, if you were standing and looking down at it, it was dark. Like, you might be able to see the bottom of it. Same yeah. thing on the sides. You, you do still kind of get that with some of the um, LCDs, but not to that extent. Yeah, I went with a nice Vizio, and it's a nice modest model. It'll probably be up by next weekend. Well, my weekend. Because <laughs> I, I do Tuesdays and Wednesdays off. It's a Tuesday right now. Mm. He has every day off. Yeah, well, I couldn't exactly say it's off, off. I mean, you know, full-time dad. Oh, like, that's a job. <laughs> Give the kid a yeah, tablet, it practically raised itself. <laughs> she broke her tablet, by the way. It doesn't work anymore. Netflix is, like, you know, doing a swirly thing, so she kept beating it on the ground, thinking somehow that would fix it. I think just because she was mad at it, I don't know. Just trying to shake Netflix loose. Basically, <laughs> I don't know, she's eight. Well, no, back in the day, we used to have to do shit like that. You know, your TV would start going wonky, you just smack it on the side really hard, and it would just clear up. Yeah. Back with the fucking rabbit ears and shit. Yeah, I still have rabbit ears on my TV, because I don't have Yeah, you got digital rabbit ears, though. Yeah. It's different. Well, you still actually have to turn the things, and then it has a dial that you turn, which the dial is new, but the actual antennae 
are still there. Saber got a hold of one of the antennas. I guess that didn't end well for the antenna. No, we have one antenna now on there. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, my God, people don't understand what it was like back then. Yeah, I mean, Fucking if you lived... kids. Yeah. I mean, these days, like, almost everybody has cable. But, you know, I grew up in an era, like, we grew up in... Before there was cable, actually. Yeah, I mean, like, for a while there, there wasn't cable. And then even then there was, my parents were broke. Yeah, I know. So was, uh, you know, so was my mother. So we, we couldn't afford, yeah, we couldn't afford cable. Matter of fact, I think the first time I had access to cable was when I moved out here when I was 22. And you're like, damn. Yep, and then a couple months later, it's like, it's always the same stuff. And then the internet started finally kind of breaking through as far as its sophistication went. Yeah. But, you know, it's, you barely even need a TV anymore. As long as you have some kind of device that hooks up to the internet, you can watch shows. Yeah. You can watch them on Netflix. You can stream them off of websites. Yeah. Which Most is, major networks have their shows available on their websites. Yeah. Just have to watch the commercials that come with them. Yeah. Just like watching regular TV. Yeah. Which I think is why televisions have now evolved to include that. Yeah. Because um, any television you would buy today has a modem built in. I mean... Um, well, not absolutely. Positively yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah, but almost all of them do now. But any decent one worth having. Yeah. And eventually, they all will. Just like computers. Computers didn't all used to have built in, uh, you know, Wi-Fi connections. Now everybody Wi-Fi's. Yeah, now they all do. I was impressed because I went for the same kind of Vizio smart TV that you've got. So there's like there's a fucking YouTube app. Yeah. There's a there's an app to go on Netflix, so I don't have to use my PS3 for Netflix anymore. Yeah. There's a twit. There's actually it goes further than that. You can get on Facebook on your television set if you wanted to. You can. Easy. Yep. You can get on Twitter. Back in the day, man, you know none of that shit. You needed like 15 different devices to do anything. Yeah. But here we are in the age of the flat screen. I mean, I went looking for TVs. And nobody makes the tube TVs anymore, at yeah. all. Yeah, no. It's, it's all a, flat screens. It's a dead technology. The only thing that bugs me about the flat screens, though, is they they seem a lot smaller than they should. Mm. Like, I've got a 30-some inch uh, tube TV. It's big. And the screen is big square. Yeah. Yours is an equivalent size, but it's a flat screen. And your TV looks tiny. Well, here's the thing about that is that uh, almost all flat screen, I think actually all flat screen televisions for the most part, are wide. Yeah. So if you look at, the, if you compared our televisions, you would see that mine is actually not quite so long, but it's a lot wider than your television. And is. it's thinner and takes up less space and it's just like, it's yeah. like a picture frame on a stand, really. Which a lot of people will actually just... Put the yeah. pic. Put the. Uh, a matter of fact, the newest televisions uh, that they showcased in the tech show this year are about as thick as two credit cards. And that's the fancy shit that the rich people are buying now. Yeah, and that's the 4K TV sets that uh, literally are like as light as a picture frame. You can hang it up with no special uh, attachments like you do now. Like Dave and I were actually talking about that the other day with uh, the televisions that, that I have and the one that he currently uh, just bought, you'd have to drill like this, you know, the yeah. mounts into the wall basically to hang it I up. Mean, the TVs aren't more than 50 pounds, yeah. but even then you don't want to put something that's 50 pounds on just a nail in the wall. Yeah, exactly. You'd actually need a bolt into the stud to actually <laughs> secure it. Um, but luckily I still have the old TV stand that uh, he gave me. From back when he had a giant, super huge, you know, all too impressive at the time TV. Yeah, that was like fifty some, fifty six inches, something like that. Yeah. It was a big mother. Mm -hmm. And it actually has a mounting rack built into the back of the TV stand. So I bought a mounting piece for the back. You just put the thing on the plate, and then put the supports on the TV, and then just click right over the top. Yep, and there you go. And then you got TV. Boom. But yeah, I was looking at, like, I went to the store, and I remember I was going to do this a while ago, but I didn't. And I was like, well, you know, 20-some inches should be enough. And I looked at a 20-some inch flat screen, and it's, like, that big. Yeah. 
And I was like, this ain't a fucking TV. My computer monitor's bigger than this. So if you want anything decent, you kind of have to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. Which is actually America's problem. Um, I'd mentioned to Dave once that uh, the reason why uh, the 3D technology died out. If you guys remember, uh, 3D TVs were all the rage for like a year. Mm -hmm. And then you don't hear anything about them anymore. If you go to your electronic shop, Best Buy, if they have those, whatever country you live in. Um, you know, they, uh, they don't sell 3D TVs anymore as of... Was it uh, the beginning of this year or the beginning of last year? I don't remember. Every company stopped making them. Yeah, because nobody cared. Yeah, because they, they just stopped. You know, it was nobody too expensive was buying them. to make, and, and people weren't buying them. And nobody wanted to wear glasses for it. I would, but they were too expensive. Yeah. Now, 3D sets actually are still being produced and still being made in Japan. The 3D TV sets that are being made there do not require glasses. But they're... Yeah. But the 3D television sets that they're producing are, I yeah, think, 30... Size. Yeah, they're like 30-inch television sets, I think. They Which can't do... Bad. Yeah, the technology that um, that allows for the 3D without the glasses apparently only goes up to, like, 30. They never quite figured out how to make it go higher than that. So they never released it in the U.S. because, um, I guess, they did tech studies or whatever, and people in the U.S. don't buy televisions that small for the most part. For the most part, that's true. I mean, I was looking at some of the sizes that are available, and, you know, it's like, if I look at my living room, where it's set up now, if I were to put a 20-some inch flat screen in my little area that I have set up for the TV, there'd be all this space and that much TV. <laughs> I was looking for something more like this much TV, you know. Although, you know... Um Someday, when you get the Oculus Rift and connect it to your computer, you can actually just watch a virtual television. True. It's not quite the same, though. No. I mean, I want full virtual reality, not just having a screen over my eyes so I can't see anything else. Well, I don't know. I mean, because if you've ever seen... Look, if I can't get a fucking blowjob on the holodeck, I don't give a shit. <laughs> let's just call it, a, let's call it what it is. <laughs> you okay? just want something touching your penis. That's what I'm saying. If like like they showed video somewhere of people watching porn on the Oculus, and it was like POV porn. Yeah. So this guy is like, it's not just like it's watching porn, but it's a full 3D virtual porn. So if you're looking up this way and the chick's bouncing in your lap, you don't see her. But as you look down, it actually shows you know what you're looking at. It's like three bitches just got out the tub. Oh, these hoes are busting it open right now. But if I'm not getting the matching sensation to match the stimulus. Even if it's just me working a flashlight, you know, that's still me working a flashlight. Yeah. Although, if you've seen, uh, there are things to work your stimulus package there that connects to uh, the USB. Stimulus package. <laughs> oh, yeah. There are, but, you know, it's just like... That's another add-on I gotta buy. Yeah. I know. You know if but... I had a holodeck, I could just be like, Computer! Taiwanese massage parlor. Yeah. Because uh, next year, the Oculus Rift, in case you guys haven't heard, is going to be uh, out for everyone to buy. Not just fancy tech people who are trying it out. Yeah, so even though right now they probably have like maybe three dozen games for the Oculus Rift, um, you still really can't get a hold of one unless you know somebody. Yeah. But they do have porn for it, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, this is it's all still in the uh, the test stages right First now. First concerns but... when you're doing virtual reality. Do you want tourism programs that can take people to far off lands? Mm. <laughs> do you want educational software to teach people stuff? Mm. Like what would what would what should we do with it? Porn and video games. Yay! Well, whichever format porno backs is usually the one that becomes the uh, the most successful. Uh, but you know, Sony every PlayStation Three has a Blu-ray. You talking to me this whole time? You know what's going to be Oculus's ultimate success is the fact that it does have porn technology because that's already been done. They they started it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They just started at the finish line. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying is that um, whatever porn backs wins. It's true, although yeah, DVD, porn Blu still has to actively support it instead of... Like, so yeah. I'm just saying, some of this stuff yeah, would be kind of cool. But. Well, it supports porn. 
You know what else I've seen for the Oculus Rift? Almost like a power glove kind of thing that you can use for it. So, I mean, it's it's not, I mean, you know, for of course, for your purposes, that's not exactly where you're at, but say playing games, I've actually seen... Like Tea Party Simulator? <laughs> yeah. I think that'd make it too oh easy. Oh, my God. How about Top Gun? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to land the plane. Ah! Well, you know what I saw for that that looks like the most interesting thing ever that I really want? What? Uh, the full immersion rig for um, the VR Skyrim. Yeah. Where they actually had like the treadmill on the ground. Oh, I did see that, yeah. And you had the controllers in your hand, so you could be like, okay, I need to fire my bow. And you do the thing, and it actually responds to your hand motions, and you're seeing the whole world. It's like you're playing the game in yeah. the game. Do you know the thing better would be like those hanging suits? Remember Lawnmower Man? And <laughs> actually, you know what would be better than that? Those suits from Ready Player One. Because those suits actually gave you full contact motion. Hmm. Full contact. Uh, it'll come. If the, yes, it will. If the Oculus, hey yeah, If the Oculus is popular, Dave will come. I was going to do that anyway, but you know, <laughs> here's hoping, uh, Oculus. But yeah, totally. you got to read that book. I just, like, totally should throw it at you and make you read it. Yeah, I still haven't gotten, gotten around to... Uh, Looking at that, because it's it's really like where the Oculus could be, or where it probably will be. Because I mean, yeah. if the pop is the thing. If it's if it becomes popular, it'll the technology will evolve. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's other companies well, working on it. I mean, there's so flying many cars and uh, hoverboards. Yeah, uh, we really got to make an episode where we just talk about all the future technology that have let us down. Yeah, I'm gonna make a list and check it twice. Make sure if this technology is naughty or nice. Hopefully naughty. <laughs> but yeah, in the the book, they ha their basic interface is a set of goggles that uses lasers to project things straight onto your retinas. Mm. So basically it's beaming the image straight into your eye. And on some of the bigger rigs, some of the better ones, you can actually get like the equivalent of smell-o-vision, I suppose. Like uh, they have, um, I forget what they called them, but they're like odor towers or something, hmm. where it could actually, like, if you're in a restaurant, it'll pipe in, like, smells that you would smell at the restaurant, or if you're in a jungle, it'll pump in some, like, nature-y smells. Yeah. That's kind of But it also doubles as an air conditioner and air purifier, because hmm. for the most part, these people are recluses that just hide in their apartments. Which, you know, I could see that. If I had that kind of virtual reality access, I probably would, too. Hell, I mean, the guy goes to the gym in virtual reality because <laughs> his suit can provide the necessary resistance for him to simulate lifting weights of any level of any weight. Huh. He basically just, you know, lays back in his chair, gets all reclined, and just, you know, grabs his virtual weights, listening to Eye of the Tiger, fucking pounding out reps. I would, that'd be so easy. Yeah, there was actually a thing he put on his program when he realized he was putting on weight where he had to exercise 20 minutes a day. In his virtual gym, or he couldn't log on to the program. Huh. Like, he actually set himself on that lockout. Now, I wonder how you do cardio. Like, is he actually... Yeah, he's got a, he's got a full-on, like, for the most part, he's, like, in a chair that kind of, like, moves and maneuvers him. Hmm. But he's still able to move his arms and legs. So he's still effectively running. So mostly basically, running in place. So basically, like, hooks up to, like, right here and just comes up, like, that way, where his arms and legs are free? Kind of. Probably. But it's, a, but it's more like a chair thing. It's, it, uh, it breaks down like the uh, fucking Skyrim virtual reality thing where it has that like moving track under his feet that he can use. It's just really cool stuff, and it's th that's where technology's going. So we go from TVs where you have a remote control with a wire that goes to the TV. You remember that shit? Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Because you never lost the remote, but you, know, you can never be too far from the TV either. Yeah. But now yeah. we've got... The possibility of the Oculus Rift taking over technology. I mean, it's like, okay, they've got the Oculus. Sony is working on theirs, which is apparently even yeah. better. Yeah. Oh, dude. Um, uh, Project Morpheus. Yeah. Uh, uh, Windows 10. The, mm. uh, well. Let's not put a down note on all this. Well, hol you know, using holograms. Holograms have, are cool. Have you heard about that? 
No. Windows 10 is going to support this uh, hologram technology that Windows has created where you're basically wearing glasses. Oh, yeah, I saw that video where you build stuff in the thing and it makes you can make stuff in a 3D printer based on what you build and you can play like Minecraft on your table. Yeah, or other holes in the walls. Yeah, or other various things like that, but um yeah, you're just wearing like a pair of glasses. But you could do like um That's augmented reality though. That's yeah. not virtual reality. Yeah. Well, uh, well, it's hologram. Holograms is what it is. They never really called it uh, augmented. Specifically, they never called it augmented reality. Of course they did. They can't call it holograms because they're not actually there. A hologram is like the little... Well, you remember my hologram? I put it on the table. And it, <laughs> yeah, with the... Yeah. yeah. The holograms, that's a hologram. You know, Gems Band are the holograms. <laughs> Which, by the way, that movie's going to suck ass. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but holograms are like things made of light that actually exist. These glasses, you only you are the only one who can see what's going on. Yeah. That's augmented reality. Yeah. Well, it's sending a signal, though, from your actual... I mean, it's not like the, just the glasses. They're sending a signal from the actual computer that's making you see yeah, these things. Yeah, but it's still... Like, if you're using... A, if you had a hologram right now of Natalie Portman naked masturbating on the table... Special effects guys will help. No? Okay. Um, but if you had that, we could both see it. We could move around it in three dimensions, and that construct of light would be in front of us all the time. We could see the front of it, the back of it. That's a hologram. When you're just putting on a pair of glasses or something that puts a buffer between you and the real world, you're not affecting the real world. It's just that's augmented reality. I'm pretty sure that's what they called it, and that's what it actually is. Mm. The article I was reading, well, I read, like, one of the first articles that announced it, and they called it, uh, holographic technology. Oh, but, they're uh, fucking retards, then. Yeah. Well, either way, if this actually works half as well as it should, because what from what they claim, this is going to work on existing computers. It's not like you have to buy a new computer that has some sort of chip in it. It's part of the program that works with the glasses. But good luck getting the glasses. Cause yeah, you're going to have to cost. buy, yeah, probably as much as the computer, which saddens me because, um... Yeah. I'm... The first, the first step in technology is not to make it affordable to everyone. It's to make it affordable to those people that want to pay an exorbitant amount of money, which then gets funneled back into the company to make it more affordable once they make a cheaper version. Just like television sets, because, yeah. um, the first... It was well-to-do uh, families that had the first television sets. Yeah, and then, and then if you had more than one TV in your house, you were a fucking millionaire. Yeah, exactly. You were Thurston Howell the Third. Exactly. Made out of fucking coconuts. Gilligan. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, okay, everyone's got a couple of TVs, but then there's projection TVs, and only the yeah. fanciest of the fancies have the projections. Well, well the first came screens. the color television sets well, after the black and white ones, and that's when you were you knew you made it in life, and then after that, yeah, projection and, and projections so on and, and so what. The big screen TVs that are as big as some refrigerators. <laughs> yeah. Heavy as fuck. Yeah. Do you know Alan Thicke um, has a television, well... He has a screen about the size of your wall in the other room, and but it's a projection. Uh, it's like a projector, like behind. Yeah, but anyway, if you do that, I could do that. I could have gotten a projector. Yeah, it was like I mega, super like, HD, whatever. I, I don't. Even then, a projector can only go so far. I don't care how HD you say the picture is. You're still projecting it onto a medium, and in the space between, you lose a lot in translation. Mm. I've seen projectors work really good, and projectors work really bad. Unless you got it from a movie theater, I don't want to fucking hear about it. But um, Kevin Smith has a 120-some inch TV. Oh, yeah, you're telling me about that. Uh... Special ordered, custom made, and it takes up, like, one of the walls of his bedroom. Motherfucker yeah. likes movies. So fuck he Alan likes... Thicke and his Canadian <laughs> sensibilities. America, giant TVs. Yeah. Watching from dusk till dawn so loud, somebody called the cops because they thought there were hostages in the building. Uh, True watching, story. <laughs> watching Quentin Tarantino five times the size of you. Looking like Godzilla and shit. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's where we are now. I mean, we got those giant TVs, and what's next? Immersive reality. So then you go to the, the future predictions of the books, and you got... The full body suits that can put you into VR. So if you get hit in a fight, you actually would feel like 
an impact through your suit. Yeah. Or if you went through a waterfall, you would feel the water hitting you. Because the whole suit is rigged to pressurize wherever the impact happens. Yeah. Where they actually have technology like that that already exists. I mean, it's not like fully marketed, but, you know, tech companies like the... Um, well, that was considered high-end in the book, too. But everyone has an interface rig that they can use, a pair of gloves and an eyepiece. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the whole virtual hugging thing? I've heard of the hugging robot. Yeah. Well, not the hugging robot. There's also um, apparently vending machines Coca-Cola put out where you hug them for a soda or hug the machine. But we're not going to get that here in America. Actually, it was in America. It was in uh, Missouri there was one, but I don't know if there's any others. You it was like in foreign countries they have things where like if you do like 30 squats you get a free bus ride. Yeah, that was Russia. Uh, Dude, I subway. would fucking rock that shit. Yeah. I would totally rock calisthenics to get free bus rides every day. Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. Kind of defeat the purpose, but you know. Do pull-ups, you know. <laughs> Do bench press? Like, you have to be able to lift, like, 415 pounds in order to... What do you think I am, Batman? <laughs> uh, thousand pounds is bullshit for a human Stop being. Stop talking about the gym! <laughs> God damn it! Why don't you and Bridget do a gym Bennett show? Press. Since you're so fucking happy with the gym. Y'all can do a fitness show. How about that? You know what? Maybe we will. Yeah. Talk about fitness. Yeah. Nobody likes the gym. Except for us who do. Anyway, you know what TVs I think are kind of neat, but uh, I don't see a purpose really to them? The curved ones. Have you seen those? Yeah, but I, I, I do know why. there's Because I've well, seen I, them in person, and I've actually yeah. watched them. And it does give you a better depth of field with the curved TV. And not only that, unlike some TVs where if you stand off to the side, you're getting a distorted image. With the curved TV, you're actually seeing, like if you were off to the side you'd still be able to see the picture as clearly as if you were right in front of it. Yeah. It's just, it adds to the depth of field when the... Because if you really think about it, all of our vision is curved. I mean, the way we see the world is kind of, you know, in the scope of our vision, it's a circle. So if you literally just put your face right in front of that TV, it would just be... It would be like an IMAX screen for your head. Yeah. Which is why you don't actually see your nose. We kind of see it, but your brain deletes it. Matter of fact, if you're paying attention, you'll be able to see your nose. But if you're not, you won't notice it's there. It's because of the curvature of your eyes. It. I can see my nose. Yeah, I can see well, my nose. Went cross eyes. Now, now, now that you have that. <laughs> now you have now that, that we've got it. everyone trying to see their nose. <laughs> well, you know, the, the eye does that. I mean, like, it fills in gaps with what it expects to see. Yeah. Which is why, you know, people can sneak up on you or like... Or like the gorilla experiment, you know, because... Yeah, I mean, like, people aren't, ex like, you know, hey, how many times did the ball get thrown? Did you see the gorilla? I'm like, what What gorilla? I totally saw the fucking gorilla. Before. Yeah, so did I. I was counting the ball, and I'm like, get the fucking gorilla out of the way. It's making me yeah. lose count. Yeah, it made me lose count, too. But, yeah, do you believe most people, though, they... They're trying to keep track of, like, what, the red ball or whatever, yeah, and there's, like, a bunch of black of ones. Yeah, a couple of times. And yeah. Bullshit. But, um, but you're focused on the ball. The, your brain deletes the gorilla, basically. Like, it or expects like, to see the people, so that's what you... You walk into a room, and someone's just standing there, and you don't expect them to be standing there. So your brain kind of doesn't even, like, take notice of the fact that they're there. They just kind of glance over it. And then when you look back, you're like, oh, shit, were you there the whole time? Yeah. That's kind of what happens. Yeah. Actually, I think that happens to, you know, if, like, you're looking for your keys or what have you, and, you know, have you looked, like, the same place, like, eight times, and then, like, the ninth time you look, there they are. Gremlin says what that is. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because your brain's programmed to know what's there. It's like, okay, that's a yeah. blank, empty space, so you just scan over it when mm -hmm. you're... Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, the brain expects things to be in a certain place, and if you're like, oh, well, that corner of the room doesn't have anything in it, you know, your brain's like, whatever, I don't fucking care. There's nothing in that corner. We don't need to pay attention to it. And then all of a sudden, hey, there was something there. Oops. Yeah. Which actually happens a lot. Indeed. Matter of fact, uh, if you move your eyes back and forth, like if you dart your eyes, believe it or not, your eyes are only seeing the image that's right here and the image that's right there where your eyes stop. Now, you don't have a blank space a black space for half a second, but the reason why you don't have a black space is because your brain fills in the area from what it knows in the middle. Yes. Look that shit up. It's actually quite interesting. 
I got that from Vsauce, by the way. Vsauce is pretty badass. Yeah. Maybe we should do a video about YouTube shows that we like to watch. Actually, that'd be great. We could. <laughs> this is a YouTube show promoting other YouTube shows. <laughs> yeah. So if you wanna if you wanna hear about shows that we like watching on YouTube, um, comment down below and let us know because we totally do it. We're probably gonna do it anyway, even if you don't comment. Um, just because unlike some channels that we know about who feature a certain charming yet horribly annoying pervert called Sinistar, you know, we don't make any pretenses about us shooting things in advance. Yeah. We'll probably do it. Totally ripping on them right now. <laughs> Suck it, Sinistar. But you could still watch Kill Steel Gaming if you You should. Want. It's pretty cool. I mean, Sinistar's kind of a douche, but... You know, who isn't they, these days? They do funny stuff, and yeah, he's he's a total pervert. Much like, you know, certain people. Not yeah, yet. I know. But if you have a smart TV, you can watch it on there. But watch us first, because, you know, fuck other channels. Watch us first. Yeah, always watch us first. And then maybe when we tell you our favorite channels, you can go watch them. Yeah, but after you're finished yeah. watching us. And so share this video, because it's like sharing a gimmick you stole from another uh, channel. Exactly. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> like Alien, which is considered a horror movie, right? And then you have Aliens, which, which is was considered a horror movie. Action horror. Yeah, action horror.